Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we are in chapter 18, which is about equilibrium. And today we're going to be talking about solubility equilibrium. So we talk about something called a solubility product. And what we're talking about is when a saturated solution has an excess of solute in it. So when you purchase a solution and it's a saturated solution, the way you know it's saturated is because there's a big pile of solute at the bottom. And that means that there's an equilibrium established between the solid and the aqueous phase. So in this case, I have silver chloride, and it is in equilibrium with uh, the silver ions and the chloride ions. So if you'll recall, when you write the equilibrium expression for a um, reaction such as this, or a solution equilibrium such as this, you only include in the equilibrium expression things that are either aqueous or in the gas phase. So solids and liquids are not part of that expression. So in this case, the equilibrium expression would just be the concentrations of um, silver ions and chloride ions. And that resulting expression would give something called the solubility product constant. And its symbol is K sub SP. And again, remembering that the silver chloride would not be part of that equilibrium expression. So our expression would just be concentration of silver ions times chloride ions. So the solubility product constant of a substance is the product of the molar concentrations of its ions in a saturated solution. And that's because in a saturated solution you have this equilibrium established. And each would be raised to the power that is the coefficient of that ion in your balanced chemical equation. So for our previous slide, the KSP for silver chloride would be concentration of silver ions times that of chloride ions. They're raised to a power of 1 because their coefficients were 1. And this equation is the so-called solubility equilibrium expression for that particular reaction. In a saturated solution containing an excess of solute, such as this one where I have magnesium chloride, Remember that when magnesium chloride dissolves and dissociates, you get one mole of magnesium ions for every mole of magnesium chloride, and you get two moles of chloride ions, because again, you've got a two to one ratio here. In order to figure out the KSP expression, you need to first write your dissociation equation, which is what I did here. Then you can write your resulting solubility product expression. And in this case, the KSP would be the concentration of magnesium ions, and these are molar molarity concentration, times the uh, chloride ion concentration squared. And it's squared because of this coefficient of 2. Note that the concentration of the chloride ion is twice that of magnesium. So if you had a 1.0 molar magnesium chloride, the concentration in solution of magnesium ions would be the same, but the chloride ion concentration of a 1 molar magnesium chloride would be 2 molar in chloride ions, because you get 2 moles of chloride ions for every 1 mole of magnesium chloride. So let's look at an example. What is the solubility in moles per liter of silver iodide if its KSP is 8.3 times 10 to the minus 17. And that would be molarity squared, if I'm thinking about this correctly. I didn't put in the unit. Um, notice that that is a very small number. And that's because we know that uh, silver iodide would not be terribly soluble. So the first thing we do is write an equation for the dissociation of silver iodide in solution. And that would be silver iodide uh, goes into solution and produces silver ions and iodide ions. Now, let's write our KSP. Our KSP would be concentration of silver ions times the concentration of iodide ions. So there they are, and our value is 8.3 times 10 to the minus 17. And again, that's going to be molarity squared because it's molarity times molarity. 
So now, if we think about this, if the concentration of the silver iodide was X, then our concentration of silver ions would be the same, X, and the concentration of our iodide ions would also be X, because it's just a one-to-one -one ratio. So, we're going to do some algebra here. Our Ksp is silver ions times iodide ions, which is X times X, so that's X squared, and that we know has the value of 8.3 times 10 to the minus 17. That was our given. So now we're going to have to do some math here, pull out your calculators, and we're going to take the square root of 8.3 times 10 to the minus 17th, and that gives us this value. Solving for x, we get 9.1 times 10 to the minus 9 molar. So again, it's molar because we took the square root of molarity squared. So that means that x is equal to 9.1 times 10 to the minus 9, and x was what our silver iodide was. So our concentration of silver iodide, which is its solubility in moles per liter, would be 9.1 times 10 to the minus 9 molar. Example 2. If the solubility of lead 2 chloride is 0.25 moles per liter, what is the value of the Ksp at this temperature? Begin by writing the equation for the dissociation of lead 2 chloride. So there we have it. Noting that for every one lead chloride, you get one uh, mole of lead ions and two moles of chloride ions. Here's our Ksp expression. Ksp is the concentration of lead times the concentration of chloride ion squared. Why is there a 2? Because of the coefficient. So now, if the lead to chloride concentration is X, then the concentration of lead ions is X, and the concentration of chloride ions is 2X, because you get twice as many chlorides for every mole of lead chloride. So now we can plug in these values. Um, if lead to chloride is 0.25, then lead is the same, 0.25, and chloride ion concentration is twice that. So 2 times 0.25 is 0 0.50 molar. So now our Ksp expression is lead uh, ions, lead 2 ions, times chloride ions squared, plugging in the numbers. So here's our lead is 0.25 molar. Our chloride is 0.5, because remember it's twice that of what the lead ions are. And so that, when we multiply it all out, comes out to 0 0.0625, and it's molarity cubed because it's molar times molar times molar. So our Ksp at this temperature would be 0 0.0625 molarity cubed. Ksp example 3. What is the solubility in moles per liter of calcium hydroxide if the value of Ksp is 5.5 times 10 to the minus 6. So we begin by writing an equation for the dissociation of calcium hydroxide in solution. So calcium hydroxide is going to dissolve and produce calcium ions and hydroxide ions. Notice there are twice as many hydroxide ions as calcium ions. So here's our Ksp expression, calcium ions times hydroxide ions squared, squared because there's a coefficient of 2, and here's our Ksp value that was given. So if the uh, potassium, or excuse me, the calcium hydroxide is equal to X, then calcium ions would also be X. You get the same number of moles of calcium ions as you have calcium hydroxide and hydroxide ions would be twice that, so 2x. So here's our Ksp expression. Ksp is calcium ions times hydroxide ions squared. We're going to use our values here that we figured out for concentration. So calcium is x, hydroxide is 2x, and hydroxide gets squared. So x times 2x squared would be 4x cubed. So now, Ksp is 4x cubed, which is equal to 5.5 times 10 to the minus 6 molarity cubed. Why am I doing all this? Well, we're trying to get to the solubility, so we have to figure out what the 
concentration of calcium hydroxide is in moles per liter. That's why we're plugging in these values. So now if we uh, solve this, we have uh, dividing both sides by 4, we have x cubed is now equal to 5.5 times 10 to the minus 6 molarity cubed divided by 4, which comes out to 1.4 times uh, 10 to the minus 6. So now we have to take the cube root. So when we do that, x is equal to 0 0.11 molar, staying with two sig figs, thank you to my calculator, and molarity cubed cube root will just be molarity. So now we know that x is equal to 0 0.11, and up here, recall that calcium hydroxide was x, calcium was x, and hydroxide was 2x. We were asked for the solubility of calcium hydroxide, that was x, so the concentration of calcium hydroxide in this case is 0 0.11 molar, which was our x. I hope this helps you in solving these problems. They're not difficult. You just have to juggle some information. You have to remember that when you put an ionic compound into solution, it dissociates. You have to remember what the uh, formula is telling us, that there is one calcium for every two hydroxide ions. Then we use that to calculate what the values would be in solution. So x here and then this would be x and this would be 2x, then I'm plugging all of that in down here and solving for my concentration. Seems like a lot of algebra, but thank goodness we have calculators and we can plug all this in and it'll do the heavy lifting for us. I hope this helps. This is Miss Augustine signing off.